Hi YouTubers, I'm going to do a sort of evolutionary thing today, uh, in many ways. I'm going to talk to you about periods of time, periods of history, Earth's history. It's something which, uh, as an evolutionist, you've got to think in, uh, for these vast, vast timescales. Um, <clears throat> when you look at the fossil records, they're often split um, into periods, periods like the Jurassic, the Triassic, the Denovian, whatever. And the one I'm going to look at in particular is the Eocene. Now, the Eocene is a period of history uh, after the dinosaur became, dinosaurs became extinct. Now, the Eocene was a very hot, warm and humid period. Now, after the dinosaurs had become extinct, there was a slight cooling of the Earth. Um, this was this was just a slight cooling, and then there was this gradual but quite extreme warming of the planet, uh, and we found that the, pop, the the old planet became populated really with these vast forests. It was a time where, um, if you've got to think of it in what it was like in those days and what sort of things would have existed. Um, as I say, forested areas, it was a time when the mammals came into their own. The primates, of course, um, were in perfect conditions to become primates. Uh, the whales, uh, I say it was a very uh, wet period in the, the Earth's history. The, on land, we had uh, great lakes and massive rivers. And some of the mammals went back into the water. And we have today the evolution from the whales and the dolphins and several other waterborne species. And when you start looking at it, you can see why. Now, if you think of the Sahara, at that, that time there was no ice at the poles, there was no ice caps, and the water levels were that much higher. The Sahara was a shallow sea. There was some scatterings of mangrove swamps amongst it but it was indeed a shallow sea, and much evidence of that is there today. Now, the period we're looking at, as I say, is sort of 50 to 40 million years ago. Yeah, relatively quite near to uh, today. It's, um, it's In the terms of Earth's history, it, it's, uh, it's really quite recent. And we also had these forests going right up into what we now call the Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. Uh, in tropical and subtropical conditions, as far north as Ellesmere Island in the Arctic, uh, Canadian Arctic, we have evidence of coral reefs, for instance, and crocodiles. So it gives you some idea of the different type of environment, the different difference there was then to today. And no doubt in the future we'll find things change considerably too. Change is what it's all about, changing of the earth. You've got to think in really earth-changing aspects, not just animal-changing aspects, when it comes to evolution. So, we also have to look at the continents then. We have Australia um, and Antarctica. These are sort of just broken away from um, areas of South America and we had Australia moving northward and Antarctica moving moving south with, to cover the pole that it's now on today and this was um, something which brought eventually was to bring the Eocene to the end of its period um, and as I said earlier we were looking at these periods and they are really beginnings and ends in an evolutionary way but we'll, we'll just look at it a little bit more. Right, what I have here um, is a piece of amber. What is really fascinating about amber is it is a ancient tree sap from this Eocene period. I'm talking about Baltic amber here. We get amber from various other areas and other periods. But in the Baltic, um, it's particularly interesting and we get the clearest and finest amber in the world. There were vast forests at this time. These forests, obviously, some of the trees got damaged. Uh, some of these trees were resin producing trees. 
uh, not just sap, but they actually had a resin that uh, went around the outer edge of the tree. And if they got damaged, they produced this, which has acted in many ways like flypaper. It hardened when it became oxidized or outside the tree. And these pieces would drop off and fall into water courses. Now, it actually relies upon falling into a water course to survive. Um, it is heavier than water, but uh, very light. It's like plastic, as I say. Nature's plastic, they call it. And it would uh, fall to the bottom of the water, but it's still reasonably buoyant. would fall, roll along in the rivers and often fall into lakes, but often into the oceans. At this time, over this gradual 10 to 15 million year period, the sea encroached in onto these amber forests and we had a sort of shallow delta. And a lot of amber ended up in this shallow delta and can be sort of harvested today or mined today. Uh, the, the sea has sub since subsided and uh, they do find this in this uh, sort of blue earth period, blue earth area of the Baltic. And um, I'll put some pictures of this up on the screen so you can see it. But well, the great thing about it is things fell into it and we can see them with immense clarity today. Here we are looking at animals that are 40 to 54 million years old, which is the estimated times uh, period that this amber was made. Often you find pieces of amber, perhaps several million years different in time, found in the same place. This was caused by that, uh, as I explained earlier, uh, it running into water. Sometimes it would fall into a lake and then that lake would then be washed into the sea or the sea would encroach upon it. And you find different periods of amber actually falling together, but they do come from the forests of this Eocene period. What do we learn about the species in it? Um, we know in, up in that area we had deciduous forests, for instance. It's what, they weren't these conifer forests that you imagine today. Um, we had uh, trees there. Oak in particular is, appears in more than 50% of Baltic amber. We can find little stellate hairs that, uh, that flew around and got trapped in it. But, um, and these were caused by the dry, the sort of blossom that dries up in the spring and then ends up in the, in the air, really, in the various dust flying about. We also find pollens in them, find leaves in it. So we've learnt a lot from them. Uh, we've learnt a lot of what sort of trees there were, what type of climate there would have been, what type of insects there. And many of the insects that we find in or from 40 million years ago, 50 million years ago, are uh, still around today. Um, we certainly find the families of the species around today, and we can see the different types of ants. And uh, uh, obviously, we never there weren't, weren't many big creatures trapped in these things. Although, if you look at uh, what was around then, um, and from other fossil evidence, we find that this was the time where the primates really did come into their own. Well, my point is, it's periods like this that we look at and they have a meaning, they have, they have reason. When you start to put that geological scale together, you've got to think in that terms of immense time. Immense time is what changes the conditions, changes the weather, changes the earth. Um, again, at this time, we had India pressing into the Asian continent. This was causing the Himalayas. This is a fairly recent event. It's not something that uh, that was around, say, two or three hundred million years ago. Um, <clears throat> the Himalayas weren't formed then. It, uh, and now we have the largest, of course, Everest, uh, the largest mountain in the world, um, that was more or less an ant hill at the beginning of this period. So um, that, that in due course caused the Himalayas, of course, a great change in weather conditions. And this, this continental drift moving at the speed of fingernails growing, you know. So you put it into millions of years and it does become something to think about. Something to, next time you're in sleep or going to sleep in bed, <laughs> if you want to stay awake, if you've got insomnia, <laughs> um, it's something to think about. It's not just something that's formed overnight. And I hope this has been of some interest. Peace.